From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. The Office of the Prime Minister announced yesterday that the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine will be given to all people over the age of 18 after the World Health Organization endorsed its use for people over 65. The National COVID-19 Vaccine Consultative Committee will continue to follow the guidelines set out by the WHO, an OPM statement said. The AstraZeneca vaccine will be administered to eligible Bahamians and residents over the age of 18 who choose to take it. During a press conference last week, Dr. Mersaline Dal Regis, chairman of the consultative committee, said officials were waiting on scientific studies about the effectiveness of the vaccine in the over 65 population before recommending its use for people in that age group. Education Minister Jeffrey Lloyd said officials are now targeting February 22nd for the resumption of in-person classes in public schools on islands, still engaging in virtual learning. Our position is that we have to do it as a phased opening, he said outside the House of Assembly yesterday. Some schools are going to be ready earlier than others, some as early as next week might be, some later, and that's on a number of factors, faculty, readiness, in terms of the environment, as well as the repairs of the school. Officials previously targeted February one to resume in-person classes in New Providence, Abaco, Exuma, and Eleuthera, but scratch those plans after health officials requested they outline the protocols to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. In his first ruling yesterday as an independent speaker of the House of Assembly, Halson Mutri overturned a controversial ruling that his predecessor had made that restricted the powers of the Public Accounts Committee, the body is Parliament's most powerful committee. Former Speaker Dr. Kendall Major ruled in 2015 that the PAC could only examine documents that have been tabled in Parliament and could only send for persons, papers or records if a parliamentary resolution permits it to do so. The consequence of this ruling has been that access to documents sought this session by the opposition-led PAC have been denied. Previously, Speaker Moutry said the opposition's claims that the committee's hands are tied were misleading. Yesterday, however, he said his first act as an independent speaker would be to connect the legislative branch to one of its key functions to provide oversight of the executive. A strange sight spotted in the sky on Tuesday night that fueled rumors of an unidentified flying object is said to be a Trident submarine launched ballistic missile test that occurred over the Atlantic Ocean. Video of the flying object seen over parts of the Bahamas and Florida circulated on social media. Kendall Dorset of the Aircraft Accident Investigation Authority said the agency was aware of the reports, explaining no local aircraft was involved. Director of Meteorology Trevor Baston said the department was also contacted about the object. He said, quote, everyone was sending in photos and videos asking us what that was in the sky, so we had to do our research to see what it was. Online outlet The Drive said the missile was launched off the Florida coast and had a re-entry area to the east of the Ascension Island, with a total downrange travel distance of around 5,200 miles. Prior to that, according to The Drive, there were a series of notices posted to airmen about the potential launch activity. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, House Democrats prosecuting Donald Trump's impeachment said today the Capitol invaders believed they were acting on the president's orders and reflected his violent rhetoric when they set out to storm the building and stop the joint session of Congress that was certifying Democrat Joe Biden's election. The prosecutors were wrapping up their opening presentation, describing in stark personal terms the horror they faced that day and unearthing the many public and explicit instructions Trump gave his supporters, both in the weeks before January 6th and at his midday rally that unleashed the mob on the Capitol. Videos of rioters, some posted to social media by themselves, talked about how they were doing it all for Trump. China has banned BBC World News from airing in China one week after threatening to retaliate for the recent revocation of the British Broadcasting License for China's state-owned CGTN. The National Radio and Television Administration said in a statement dated midnight Friday that BBC World News coverage of China had violated requirements that news reporting be true and impartial and undermined China's national interests and ethnic solidarity. The BBC already is generally not viewable in China. China, outside of some hotels, businesses, and residential compounds for foreigners.
The Tribune's AccuWeather update, a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. High pressure continues to dominate weather conditions across the island chain through tonight. Beachgoers in the central and southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to the moderate risk of rip currents along eastern shorelines. For all areas, it'll be partly sunny to sunny, warm and breezy, with isolated showers this afternoon becoming fair to partly cloudy and breezy, with a few light passing showers tonight. A small craft's caution is in effect in the central and southeast Bahamas. Winds east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots across the northwest Bahamas, increasing 15 to 20 knots, but gusty at times in the central and southeast Bahamas. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean in the northwest Bahamas, building 4 to 7 feet in the central and southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 86 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 72. The sun will set at 6 p.m. and will rise tomorrow morning at 646. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper. Now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.